All right, everybody. In this video, we're going to create a game of rock, paper, scissors. Let's create our function declarations first. Char get user choice. Char in this case would be the return type. We'll be returning a character. Char get computer choice. Void. There is no return type. Show choice there will be one parameter char choice then the last function is void choose winner there will be two parameters char player that's us char computer the computer's choice will be determined randomly using a random number generator let's define these functions let's copy all of these after the main function, I will paste them, then add a set of curly braces after each. Currently, if I were to run this program, we do have some warnings because with these two functions, get user choice and get computer choice, we're not returning anything, even though we stated that we're returning a character. Just for the time being, I'm going to return zero, just so that those warnings go away, but we'll correct these momentarily. So we shouldn't have those warnings. Within the main function, we will declare two characters. One for player, char player, that's us, char computer, that's the opponent. We will take our player, then assign this a value of whatever is returned from the get user choice function. Then we need to fill in this function. Within the get user choice function, I will create a local variable of player as well. I'll create a message to begin our game. Standard output. Rock. Paper. Scissors. Game. I'll add a new line. Uh, this part isn't necessary, but I'm just going to add a bunch of asterisks afterward. Just because I think it would look cool underneath our title. Let's list our choices. Standard output, the character R for rock, new line. Uh, let's copy this. P for paper, S for scissors. Standard input player. I'm just going to test that this works. Standard output player. Rock, paper, scissors game. R for rock, P for paper, S for scissors. I'll pick R. That would give us the character R. Okay, so we know that that works. I'm going to place some of this code within a do while loop because the user might not type in R, P, or S. So do while I'm going to stick my code within the do while loop. I'm just going to add one more line of output. Choose one of the following. All right, we'll continue this while loop as long as our player does not equal the character R and player does not equal the character P and player does not equal the character S. Then at the end of this function, we will return player. We can't escape this while loop until we pick either R, P, or S. That's how this condition works. Let's test it. Rock, paper, scissors game. Choose one of the following. R for rock, P for paper, S for scissors. Uh, I will pick W for wombo. Choose one of the following. R, P, or S. Uh, I like the letter X. Nope, can't pick that. 
Uh, let's go with S for scissors. Okay, S is a valid choice. Okay, that is the get user choice function. That is complete. So I'm gonna close out of this function. After we assign our player variable, let's display the user's choice. Standard output your choice colon space. Then we will invoke the show choice function. Show choice. Then there is one parameter. We have to pass in a choice as an argument. We will pass in our player. That's a character. Within the show choice function, I'm going to create a switch. Switch. We're examining some value against matching cases. We'll examine our choice. Our choice argument that we receive. If our choice matches the case R, what would we like to do? I'm going to display some output. Standard output, just rock. Then I'll add a new line. Make sure to break. Then case P for paper. Standard output, paper. I'll add a new line. Then break. Case S for scissors. Standard output. Scissors. New line. Then break. Let's close out of this function, then test it. Okay, I'll type R for rock. Your choice, rock. P for paper. Your choice, paper. S for scissors. Your choice, scissors. Okay, the show choice function is done. Now we need to get the computer choice. Computer equals get computer choice. Then we'll need to fill in this function get computer choice right here. We'll need to generate a random seed. S rand, pass in the time function, then type zero or null. You may need to include this header file at the top of your program, just in case this doesn't work. Include C time. We'll generate a random number between one and three. Int num equals rand function modulus three plus one. We'll examine this number against matching cases. Switch, we're examining our num. The first case will be the number one. If our random number is one, let's return the character r. Since we're returning a value, we don't necessarily need to add that break statement. We're already breaking when we return. So we can omit this case two, return the character P for paper, case three, return S for scissors. Okay, we can close out of the get computer choice function. That's all done. Back within the main function, let's display the computer's choice. Standard output, computer's choice. We'll invoke the show choice function, but pass in our computer. Let's run it to test it. I'll pick R for rock. Your choice rock, the computer's choice is paper. Let's try it like two more times. Okay, we chose paper, the computer chose rock. Let's pick S for scissors. Your choice scissors, the, com the computer's choice is also scissors. Okay, so the computer is picking a random choice, that's good. Now we'll have to decide who won. At the end of our program, we will invoke the choose winner function, pass in our player, as well as the computer. Then within the choose winner function, let's create another switch. We will examine our player against matching cases. 
if our player chooses rock, the character R, I think the best way to do this would be to use if statements within each case. If the player chooses rock, and if the computer chooses R for rock, that means there's a tie. I'll display that. Standard output, it's a tie. Then I'll add a new line. Else if the computer chooses paper, that means we lose. Standard output, you lose. Else, well, there's only one option left, scissors, because if the computer didn't choose rock or paper, that means they pick scissors. Rock beats scissors. So let's display that the user won. You win. Oh, then be sure to add a break at the end to break out of the switch. This is the case if the player chooses rock. Let's copy all of this code. Paste it. And let's move this over. Now if the user chooses paper, we have some different results. Paper beats rock will change this line of output to be you win. If the user chooses paper and the computer chooses paper, that means it's a tie. It's a tie. If we choose paper and the computer chooses scissors, that means we lose. You lose. One more case. If the player picks scissors and the computer picks rock, you lose. Scissors beats paper, you win. Else, scissors ties with scissors, it's a tie. And that is everything. So let's close this function and run this program. Okay, I'll pick R for rock. We picked rock, the computer picked scissors, you win. P for paper. The computer also picked paper, it's a tie. I'll pick scissors. I picked scissors, the computer picked rock, you lose. Well, all right then everybody, that is a game of rock, paper, scissors. If you would like a copy of this code, I'll post this in the comment section down below. And well, yeah, that's a game of rock, paper, scissors in C++.